Hi friends, my name is Baji. Welcome to our channel. In our previous video, we discussed one of the important concept of script customization that is parameterization. If you haven't watched that video yet, I highly recommend watching it first and then continuing this video. In today's video, we will talk about another important script customization that is correlation. Throughout the video, I try to simplify the concept for better understanding. So without any further delay, let's get started. Before we get into the main topic, let's take a quick look at how a client or user communicates with a server while using the application okay for our discussion purposes let's use a banking transaction example like checking how much money is in a savings account okay if the clients want to access product information like account balance he or she needs to log in to the bank application right so as a first step the client will log in to the application using username and password behind the scenes the browser will send a post request to the server with all the required information Next, the server validates the user credentials are correct and confirms that the user is an existing user. Once the user information is accepted by the server, then the server creates a session and stores the user information in the server memory. Afterwards, it will create a unique ID as a cookie that corresponds to the user session and return it to the client. Next, client sends a request for account balancing along with the session ID. Then the server verifies the session ID information. If it is a valid session ID, then it returns the account balance information. Once user decides to log out then he will send out a logout request to the application along with the user session id then the server will clear the session in the memory and send the confirmation back to the client okay for some reason if the user browser sends a request to the server with the same session id then the server will reject it as the session was already closed so in this example the session id is dynamic in nature that means for all the subsequent new communication the server will create a new session and session id the reason for sharing all this information is that when we record the script using JMeter or any other performance testing tool for the login flow, the tool will capture the dynamic value as is. In our example, it will record the J session ID as is in the script. Okay. Let's say without any customization, we have executed the script. Then JMeter will try to send a login request to the server. Then the server will create a new session and a new session ID will be returned to the client. Since the script still holds the old session ID, it will try to send the subsequent request that is checking balance request to the server using the old session ID. Then the server will look for that session in the memory. Since it did not find anything related to that session, then it will reject the request okay to avoid such failures we need to extract the dynamic value like session id from the server response and store it in a variable and pass it on to subsequent requests so the process of doing this extraction and storing it in a variable and passing it to the subsequent request is called correlation this is one of the important customizations in any performance testing tool including jmeter if these dynamic values are not handled properly then our testing might fail or sometimes may end up with inaccurate results so some of the common examples of dynamic values are session id like we discussed and we have csrf token here csrf means cross-site request forgery this is to prevent the csrf attacks and then we have use state we can see this type of dynamic value mostly in dotnet applications and sometimes we also need to correlate the timestamps in some situations, we may need to correlate some values that we may see it in the URL. For example, in any e-commerce application, if we select any product behind the scenes, the application will refer to the ID associated with that product and the same product will be shown into the URL. Okay. So such scenarios, we may also need to correlate this product ID. Otherwise, all the users will try to select the same product, which is not a realistic scenario. Okay. Next, authentication tokens. So tokens obtained during the authentication process like JWT tokens, nothing but JSON web tokens. These days, most applications, we might see this JWT token. We may need to send this token as part of the request header. Okay. And finally, random values. These are the values that the server will generate randomly and they will be in dynamic nature. So we need to correlate them. So these are just some examples of the dynamic values. And in some situations, we may see some other values as well. So correlation can be done in two ways, manual correlation and then auto correlation. So manual correlation means the performance tester will manually identify the dynamic values in the server response and correlate them in the subsequent request. So in JMeter, most of the time, we will be doing manual correlation using the post processor elements. The most commonly used post processor element is the regular expression extractor. We do use other post processor elements like CSS selector and JSON selector. Based on the need, we will make use of those elements. Okay. 
In auto correlation, after recording, the tool will replay the script to analyze if there are any dynamic values. If it finds anything, then it will show the list of the values and we will have an option to pick and choose and apply the required correlations. Then tool will take care of replacing the dynamic values with the variables automatically. Okay. In JMeter, we don't have any default element that can be used for auto correlations. However, BlazeMeter has developed a plugin with which we can do this auto correlation. You understood what is the correlation and some of the examples of dynamic values. However, you might be wondering how to identify these dynamic values in the script, right? So there are two methods that can be used to identify these dynamic values record and compare that means we might have to record the script multiple times with the same steps and the same test data then compare each recorded value in both scripts to understand for any differences and the second method is replay the script without any customization if the script has any dynamic values then it may fail at that particular step look for the parameter name corresponding to the dynamic value at the fail step then check the parameter value during the replay time because in general we can find the dynamic values in the previous request response if the value differs then we might have to correlate and replace it okay I know both methods are tedious. However, once you record one script for your application, then you can easily understand the different dynamic values of that application. So in your next script, you can easily replace the relevant dynamic values. Okay. Now you might be wondering how the tool captures the exact dynamic values from the server response, right? Within the post processor element, we specify a regular expression. This guides JMeter to identify a particular string from the server response and capture it and then store it in a variable. So what is a regular expression? Basically, it is a sequence of characters that defines a search pattern to match a string or text. Okay. Using this pattern, JMeter identifies the dynamic value from the server response. We can define the pattern using two ways, using simple characters. Simple patterns consist of a specific characters for which you want to find a direct match. For example, if we define ABC, then it tries to match exact ABC occurrence. That means all the characters together and in that order. So in the first two example strings like Hi, do you know your ABCs and the latest airplane design evolved from the slab craft. It will look for the exact ABC characters in the same order, which is highlighted in yellow. However, in the third example string, it will not match anything as all three characters do not exist. So we only have AB at the last. And we can define the regular expression pattern using some special characters as well. When the search for a match requires something more than a direct match, like finding one or more characters are finding white space we can use the special characters in the pattern for example to match a single a followed by zero or more b's followed by c then we will specify the pattern as a b asterisk c here asterisk after b means zero or more occurrence of the preceding item that is b so in the given example you can see it will match a b b b b c right if you have that kind of requirement then you can use the special characters to define the pattern if you want to master regular expression, then you should refer to the regxr.com website. This is also an open source project and you can participate in this project if interested. Other performance testing tools like LoadRunner, we also capture the dynamic values using boundary based search. That means we will define the left boundary of the dynamic value and the right boundary of the dynamic value. Then the tool will capture the string within those boundaries. We can also use regular expressions in LoadRunner like JMeter. Okay. So in a nutshell, we can define the process of correlation in three steps. First, identify the dynamic value and then add the post processor element as a child to the appropriate sample element and define all the required configurations. And finally, replace the dynamic value with the variable name. So in manual correlation, we will do all these steps, whereas in auto correlation, the tool will do it for us. Okay. Now let's correlate the dynamic values using both methods using JMeter. Let's open the JMeter. To demonstrate this correlation concept, I'm going to use Orange HRM Live open source demo application. Okay. And I will share the application URL in the description. Please do not put so much of load on this application. Okay. Just use it for scripting purposes. So the flow I'm going to test it out is launching this application and then login to the application using this username and password. So let's type admin and then admin123 as a password. After that, click login. Then it will log into the application and then select the profile click logout so these are the three steps that we are going to record in this script okay first we will see the manual correlation method so the first step in the manual correlation process is to identify the dynamic value right so there are two ways to do it 
the first method is recording the same flow with the same test data multiple times and compare them to save some time i have already recorded the login flow of this application multiple times okay so let me open those scripts i have saved everything on my desktop so this is the first script let me launch another instance of jmeter so that i can open the second script so open again go to the desktop jmeter script ohrm demo tool let me keep side by side so that you will understand so in this script we have three config element one thread group with three transaction controller okay so we have launch login and logout similarly here also in the second script three config elements one thread group with three transaction controller login launch login and logout okay and then we have http test script recorder which we use to record the script inside that http test script recorder view results tree let me open the recorded results open so these are the server responses during the recorded time similarly let me open the view results tree and then open the results so now i have two scripts opened with recorded responses okay so if you want to record the script and also save the recorded responses what you need to do is when you open the jmeter instead of adding those elements manually like adding all three config elements thread group what you can do is you can click the templates and then select the recording template after that you click the create so it will ask you to fill this information you can delete the host to record and the scheme you can specify the file name let's say i want to save it with the file name demo4 so after you filling that file name information then click create so the template will create all these elements for us okay so we can see three config elements and then one thread group with one recording controller one view results tree and then we have http test script recorder which is disabled and then view results tree if you notice the file name so this is the name that we have specified so once you start recording then what jmeter will do is it will try to save all the recorded responses in this file and this file will be stored in bin directory okay so this is the way to save the recording responses so this is very important because we will use them for the comparison purposes if you haven't do this before recording it is not possible to save the results once you close the jmeter and then if you reopen the file again you will not be see the recorded responses okay so let me close this because we don't need this file so this is demo 1 and then this is the demo 2 now let's compare them and find out if we have any dynamic values okay so first let's go to the launch transaction if you noticed here in demo 1 i have only two http request samplers whereas in demo 2 i have six http request samplers you must be thinking if i record the same flow why i am getting different request count right if you go to any one of the requests you will see the difference so here it is assets.msn.com so this is not belongs to applications during the recording sometimes we may be seeing this kind of junk request so what we need to do is we can delete those requests so delete this one because we don't need that and then here also if you see edge.microsoft.com so if you keep this http request sampler and try to run the script then jmeter will try to send the request to microsoft.com this is not our application and we really don't need to send any request to those servers so let's delete this again and then if you see again windows.msn.com so you need to do this cleanup after you record the script so here also microsoft.com let's remove this again okay now we have two transactions which belongs to open source demo rnhrmlive.com okay and the same thing here as well so if you compare these two transactions these are get request and we don't see any parameters so first one login and then if you see messages the same thing here so there are no dynamic values in these two requests we will continue the comparison in the next transaction which is login again i have so many requests in demo to login transactions let me quickly clean up the requests that are not belongs to this application i'm removing everything which are not belongs to this application so make sure that you are deleting only the request not belongs to this application the best practice is you can disable them first and then you can delete later on so this is open source demo orange hrm live.com so we need this request and this is also orange hrm and this is not required so these are all our application requests so we should keep them here and this is not ours this is also not ours and then this is also not ours okay now i clean login transaction let me save and then let me quickly check in the demo one script to see if i have any junk requests it looks okay and then for logout we have three http request sampler all are belongs to orange hrm live.com okay let's see here 
Okay, now we don't have any junk requests in both scripts. Let's continue our comparison with login transaction. So the first transaction, if you see here, we have three parameters, token, username and body. So let's copy this token to see if it is a dynamic value. So you can open notepad and paste that value. Do the same thing here. So in the auth validate request, we have token recorded. So let's copy that and then paste it here. So this one, demo one and demo two. Okay, we identified one dynamic value, which is token. Okay, so it is different in both scripts. Let's continue the comparison to see if we have any such kind of dynamic values in the scripts. So 10, 11. these are current date and time. We don't need to correlate them. So let's continue date again. So I don't see any other request other than the token. Let's do the same thing here as well to make sure that we are not missing anything. Okay. So I think only one dynamic value, which is token. Now the first step is completed. We have identified the dynamic value by comparing two scripts. Once we identify the dynamic value, we need to understand for which request the server sent this dynamic value, right? So how we can find out during the recording, I have saved the recorded responses in both scripts. So we can use those recorded responses to understand in which response this dynamic value exists. Okay. So let's copy the first script dynamic value. We can do this in one script because we don't need to do the same thing in two scripts, right? So we can maximize the demo one script and from now onwards, we will focus on this demo one script. So go to view results tree under HTTP yes, test script recorder and then in the search bar, paste the token value and then click search. See, it is highlighting two requests. So now minus three and then minus nine. So let's go to the first one and then go to the response data and again paste the same dynamic value and click find. So this is the token value. So application is sending the token in the first request response. Okay. So let's copy this and again paste this here. And what we will do is we will convert this dynamic value into a regular expression. So, so select the dynamic value and then type open brackets dot plus question mark and closing brackets. Once you type the regular expression, select the regular expression checkbox and then click again fine. If our regular expression is correct, then it will highlight the string. So we can see the entire string is highlighted. That means whatever we have written regular expression is correct. We can also verify this in another way. You can copy the entire string with the regular expression and then click the regular expression tester in text drop down and then you can paste the regular expression here and then click test if the regular expression is correct then again it will show the results so here you see here we can see that geometry is saying it found one match and it is giving the details of that match so this is the way we can validate our expression is correct before we even go further okay since the geometer highlighted the second request response also let's quickly go there to understand whether we have any dynamic value in the response. So if you click this, go back to tag and then see the response. We don't have any dynamic value, but if you go to request, we can see the dynamic value. The reason for geometer highlighting this is the particular value that we searched is exists in the request body. So that is why it highlighted that one as well. We need to make sure that we identified the right request. Okay. Now we know that the dynamic value exists in the minus three request response. Once we identify the correct request, then the next step is to add the post processor element. So the dynamic value exists in minus three request, which is our first request in the launch transaction. So let's go there and, and right click that request, click add post processor, then regular expression extractor. So it will add the regular expression extractor. So we need to configure these options in order for Jmeter to extract the dynamic value from this request response. Okay. So let's quickly go through these different configurable options. Like other elements, we have name and comments, which we can use to configure the name of this regular expression extractor. So next we have apply to section. In this apply to section, we have different options. By default, main sample only will be selected. So here main sample only means that this regular expression is only applied to main sample. If we select main sample and sub sample, then the expression is applied to both main samples and sub samples. And if you want only this expression to be applied on sub samples, then you can select the sub sample. Next we have Jmeter variable name to use here. If we select this, we need to specify the variable name. So Jmeter will apply the expression pattern to the contents of this named variable. Okay. So let's keep the default value here, which is main sample only. And then we have fields to check here. 
we need to specify which fields that JMeter should be checked for this pattern. So by default here body will be selected. So JMeter will look for this pattern, the content of this body. Okay. And next we have body and escape. So this is also the response body, but only difference is that in this response, we will have all HTML escape codes. Okay. And then again, body as document. This is another type of document, which considered as body. If you want JMeter to look for the pattern for this body as a document, then you should be selecting this option. And then we have response headers. So if you want to apply this pattern to the response headers, then you can select this option. Similarly, we have request headers, URL, response code and response message. So based on the requirement, we have to select the appropriate option. For now, we will go with the body because we know that the dynamic value exists in the response body, right? And then we have name of the created variable. So here we need to specify the variable name in which JMeter will store the dynamic value. So let's specify the value as C underscore token. So C represents the correlation. So this is the naming convention that we follow when we do this in the real time projects to differentiate the parameterization and correlation. So it is not necessary that we have to follow this just as a best practice. We are following this method. Okay. Next regular expression. So here we need to specify the regular expression pattern that we have defined while searching the dynamic value. So let's paste that value here. So here we have specified the pattern as open parenthesis dot plus question mark and then closing parenthesis. So let's copy the pattern here and then and then paste it in the notepad so that I can explain. So here opening and closing parenthesis represents a group. So in the regular expression pattern, sometimes we also define multiple groups. Okay. And then the dot represents to match any character. So if you noticed our dynamic value, it has numbers, strings, dots, hyphen. So that is why we specified as dots so that JMeter will match for any character. And then next we specified plus. That means it will match one or more times. So whatever the value that it is finding between these two strings, it will match one character or more than once. Okay. That is why we specified plus. And then next question mark. So we are asking JMeter to stop when it finds the first occurrence. So this is the meaning of this pattern. You can use this pattern for any of your regular expression because it will match any character and it will match one or more times and it will stop whenever the first occurrence. Okay. So the next option is template and inside the template option, they specify dollar i dollar where i is capturing group number starts at one. So in the regular expression, sometimes we can specify multiple groups which surrounds with this parenthesis. In this example, we have only one group, but sometimes we might have something like this. So here, this is group one, group two and group three. Okay. So in the next option, JMeter is asking which group that you want to capture. Sometimes even we can concatenate those groups and form a string as well. Okay. Since our example has only one group, we will specify dollar one dollar and then we have match number and then within brackets again, they are saying zero for random. So if JMeter find multiple matches to that pattern, which match should we select? If we say zero, then it will pick randomly from those matches. Otherwise, if you want any specific match, you should be specify that match number. So let's go back to that view registry of the recorded and then go to regular expression extractor and then use that regular expression again. Click test. So it found one match count, right? So sometimes we might be seeing multiple matches like match count three, four. So in that scenario, which match that we want JMeter to use since we have only one match we can specify as one and next we have default value here we need to specify the default value in case JMeter is not able to find any string using that regular expression pattern so let's say token not found so specifying the default value will be particularly useful during the debugging if you are not specifying any default value then it is difficult to tell whether the pattern is wrong or something else is wrong, right? So that is why it is always better to define some default value. And if you want to use a empty default value, you can check this box. Okay. So these are all the different regular expression extractor. So after updating all the required configuration options in this extractor, the next step is to replace the dynamic value with the variable. So let's copy the variable and then go to the request where we see the dynamic value. 
So let's select this dynamic value and replace with this variable. So dollar and within flower brackets, the variable name. So defining variable name syntax is pretty much same as what we have learned in parameterization concept, right? So we always start with dollar and within flower brackets, we specify the variable name. Okay. Since we have only one dynamic value with this, we have completed all these three steps. Like we have identified the dynamic value and then we understand in which request response the dynamic value exists. We created a regular expression extractor for the HTTP request sampler and then we replace the dynamic value with the variable name. Now it's time to run the test. So you can also add one sampler element to the thread group which will be helpful to debug the regular expression value. So right click the thread group, add sampler and then debug sampler. So we have different options available here. If you want to see all the list of Jmeter property, you should select the true value. Or if you want to see the Jmeter variables output, then you can select true. If you don't want to see them, false. And then again, if you want to see the system properties, then you should select true or false. In this demo purposes, we just wanted to see the Jmeter variable. So let's select the option as true. Okay. And then run the script. Since we have already stored the recorded results with the file recording view results demo, Jmeter is asking the confirmation whether do we want these results to be appended to that existing file or do we want to override that file. So let's say append to existing file. Now transaction one executed, transaction two failed. So let's understand the reason why it is failed. Let's select the debug sampler and then go to response data, token not found. Something wrong with the regular expression pattern. So let's quickly go back. There is an additional space here. So that is why it did not find that value. See, this token not found is really helpful, right? If you go to the results, we know that it did not find the token. So we figured out that there is a typo in the regular expression extractor. So let me clear the results and then rerun it. Append to existing file and then check the results again. So this time, all our requests are successful. So if you go back to debug sampler, then you can see the C token. You see group zero, group one, and then the value. This is one method of doing the correlation by comparing two scripts and then identifying the dynamic value. Okay. The second method is simply rerunning the script without making any customization. So let me copy the original dynamic value and then I will replace it in the login request. Okay. And also let me disable this. Then let's clear this results and rerun the script. So you have to do this after recording it. Let's assume that we did not made any customizations. We are simply running the script. So when you run the script, you will notice that the transaction of login is failed. If you expand that, go to the failed transaction, it is saying session expired. So let's go back to the request 12 to see are there any dynamic values passed. So here we don't have anything. So go to the previous request. Now we notice that there is a token. Okay. So this token it seems to be a dynamic value. So let's copy the dynamic value from this request and then go to view registry of test script recorder where we will see the recorded responses and then paste that in the search. Click search. So it will highlight two requests, number three and number five. And the rest of the procedure is pretty much same. So you will go to each response and then find out the dynamic value and then create the pattern using regular expression. So let's select the entire string and paste it here and then create the pattern. So opening and closing parenthesis dot plus question mark and then select regular expression and then click find. So it will find out the dynamic value, right? So from now onwards, take this value and then you know where exactly this value exists, right? In which response this dynamic value exists, go to that request and then add the regular expression extractor with all the required configuration. Okay. So let's rerun the script again to make sure that everything is working. We need to specify the token variable. So C underscore token closing lower bracket. Okay. Let's save and run the script again. Go to view registry. Okay. So all the requests are successful. So this is the manual correlation method. Okay. I hope you understand this manual correlation process. In case anything is not clear, please mention it in the comment section. Now we will discuss the auto correlation process. So in Jmeter, we don't have any default elements to handle this auto correlation process. However, BlazeMeter created a plugin with which we can do this auto correlation. Okay. Since it is a plugin, we need to install it first in the JMeter. So to install a plugin, we can make use of our plugin manager. So go to options and then plugin manager. So go to available plugins and then look for BlazeMeter. 
So it will list all the plugins developed by the blaze meter. Here I am not seeing the correlation recorder plugin because I have already installed before this demo. So if I go back to my install plugins list, I can see the blaze meter correlation recorder plugin. Okay. So once you find it in the available list, select that and then click apply changes and restart the JMeter. So that will install the correlation recorder plugin. Basically this correlation recorder plugin is giving us a recorder element. So to add a recorder element, same like HTTP test script recorder, you can right click the test plan, add, go to non-test elements and then you can see the correlation recorder. So using this recorder, we can record the script and after recording the script, we can use their functionality to auto correlate the dynamic values. Okay. So instead of adding all different elements manually, what we can do is we can make use of the template created by this correlation recorder plugin. So let's remove this and then go to template from the template, select the correlation recorder template and then click create. Say no, because we don't have any elements to save here. So click no. So if you noticed here, it is doing exactly the same thing as recording template, right? It created three HTTP config elements, one thread group, and then one view registry. And then it created a correlation recorder. And again, under that we have a view registry. So the only difference is the normal recording templates created a HTTPS test script recorder element, whereas the correlation recorder template created the correlation recorder element. So that is the only difference. Now, the next step is we need to record the script. So enable this element. So to record a script using this recorder element, we also need to update the proxy settings, right? So we can open our browser and then go to settings, proxy, open computer proxy and then go to manual proxy setup section, click setup and then use a proxy server, select this option. So that will enable the proxy settings. Now, when we start the recording, then all the requests will go through that proxy. Okay. But this is pretty much same as what we learned during the recording script demo, right? It's exactly the same thing. Only difference is we are using a different recorder element. Okay. So here in the target controller, let's keep the default as use recording controller, we can record all the elements in the recording controller instead of creating a separate transaction and then adding them because here I just wanted to explain you the process of auto correlation. And once you have the script, then you can do all the other customizations, right? We have request filtering option tab is available. Same like record HTTPS test script recorder. And we also have additional called correlation. So we will see this tab after we complete the recording. Okay. So now let's start the recording. Once you click the start, then again, it will generate a root certificate. We already added this. We don't need to do any other action. So let's take this and then go to browser and open the application. Since I already opened it, I'm just refreshing so that the same transaction will be triggered again. Okay. So if I go back here, I can see some events in the recording controller. Okay. Let me continue the other steps like login, admin, admin, one, two, three, and then click login. Since we are recording everything in under recording controller, we don't need to go to JMeter and then select the different transaction controller. Let's confirm we have the login transactions recorded and then finally log out. Once the recording is done, click stop. Once we stop the recording, then we will get this correlation wizard. So it is asking whether we want this correlation recorder plugin to replay the script to identify if we have any dynamic values. So let's say yes. So it will replay the script and then it will look for the differences and then it will say after replaying the test plan, seven requests were failed. So the correlation recorder plugin replayed the script and it noticed that there are seven requests failed. Now it is asking our confirmation to generate the correlation suggestions so that we can fix those correlations. Again, here you can say yes. And then here it is asking the method for correlation. If we have any existing correlation templates, we can select this first option and then continue. Then it will ask us to select the template. Since we are doing it for the first time, we don't have any templates. So we can select the second option, automatic comparison and variable detection. So select that option and then click continue. Then it will show different suggestions of those dynamic values. So here we have an option to pick and choose which value to correlate. Okay. So this is not a correlation. Referrer generally is not a correlation. So we can uncheck that option and token seems to be a correlation value. So let's keep that content type and username is not a correlation. So you can easily understand by seeing these suggestions, right? If you want to save this rule, then you can also say save correlation. So let's click save correlation. Then it will save that correlation so that if you have another script, which will 
use the same type of correlation then you can use this correlation to correlate the dynamic value okay and then click apply so after that we will get a message saying that the suggestions were applied successfully to your test plan please review the changes and when you are ready replay the review the results okay click ok now if you go to the recording controller and we know when we did the manual correlation for the same script we know that correlation is there in the validate request so and select that you can see here it is already replaced the token here and if you go to the main request which is auth login this is the request where we have that correlation dynamic value right so it added that regular expression extracted so here it created the variable name and then it defined the pattern all other things that we did it during the manual correlation so that this plugin itself did everything for us we did not do anything we just recorded using that correlation recorder and then after recording we selected the required correlation and then we applied that correlation right so this is the beauty of the auto correlation here you don't need to do anything manually everything this plugin itself will take care now it's time to run the script to make sure it is working as expected okay so let's run the script it is asking to save the test plan so let's say save first let's say demo auto correlation you can give anything i'm just giving some name so after that it is asking whether we want to append the results to existing results files so let's say append to existing now the execution is done but we still see some failures let's go to that failures to understand the reason so if we go to connection test dot request you see here this is not the our application request again this is a junk request so let's delete those requests so i think this is the one deleted and then so you can select all of them together and then remove now let's clear the results and replay the script again to make sure that we don't have any failures now everything looks good we can also do one thing we can add a debug sampler and then verify the value as well so let's clear again the results run the script append to existing file go to debug sampler now we can go to response data then we can see the token value right the same thing so this is the auto correlation process now go back to correlation recorder and then we will look the correlation if you see here since we have saved the correlation rule it added that entry here so it added the variable name and then in the correlation extractor it specified the regular expression pattern and the correlation replacement also it specified the regular expression pattern if you want you can save this as a template and then you can also load the template in the future whenever you are trying to record another script okay and then we also have correlation wizard which will open that same options like whether to select from the existing correlation template or the automatic comparison and variable detection so you can click continue and then we can choose the right value from the suggestions okay so this is the way to do the auto correlation in jmeter i hope it is clear to you in case anything is not clear please mention it in the comment section so that's it for this video thank you so much for staying till the end and supporting me I hope you understand the correlation concepts explained in this video. In case anything is not clear or requires more detailed information, please feel free to mention it in the comment section. All the video notes have been uploaded in GitHub and you can find the link in the description. If you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing and also like and share this video with others so that others will also get benefited. I'll see you with the next video in this module. Until then, take care, stay safe and keep learning.